code for cool the Walther PPK I love it I always have yes I know there's lots of outstanding 380 pistol designs out there I have reviewed a few here in the Nut and Fancy project over the years perhaps more to follow but even with all this competition and after all these years decades I still think the Walther PPK and the Walther PP still hold their ground on some really important levels. Hello guys, this is Nut and Fancy. It is July 2012. It's taken me over four years to get to this review. Here it is though. I'm going to talk about the Walther PPK and its brother, the PP. I have an example of both to show you. I'm going to talk about all the stuff I always talk about somewhat in detail and I say somewhat because there's so much history to the Walther PPK and the PP I cannot do it justice in a single part video it's just impossible moreover especially the PPK is a dual personality pistol and by that I mean one part of its personality is actually rooted in popular culture the movies folklore if you will the other half is rooted in reality in its capabilities its performance first kind of cool parameters that I always talk about here in TMP and I'm gonna talk about both of those because I think they're both fascinating and answer the question why uh, or why still in 2012 and beyond people buy the PPK and love the PPK Oftentimes, I refer to this, if you're new to the Nut Fancy Project, as two kinds of cool. The first kind of cool is performance and roll. Second kind is just, it just turns us on. We love it, for whatever reason. I'm going to start off there with the Walter PPK. Second kind of cool. In some ways, I'm gonna, going to admit, that is why I'm attracted still to the Walther PPK. Code for cool. It is a cool pistol. Is it because I grew up watching James Bond use the PPK against bad guys? Probably. It probably is. It's been in all kinds of movies. Often shown as to have almost supernatural capabilities. The Walther PPK. I mean, let's be real. In James Bond, shooting the PPK, I mean, he did things with a the PPK that should never have been done with a little underpowered 380 cartridge. You know what I'm talking about. Amazing accuracy in the movies, incredible knockdown power, able to go through barriers. Yeah, James Bond movie after James Bond movie, the PPK reigned supreme until they got the bright idea, hey, let's replace it with the P99. And that didn't go over so well with the James Bond fans, and I think in Quantum of Solace, the PPK made its comeback. And it's still in there. Is it a realistic pistol for self-defense? We're gonna talk about that. But in the James Bond movies, and in other movies, it's shown as to be pretty awesome. Okay, we're talking second kind of cool, our attraction to the gun. I've been talking about the PPK. This is a great time to introduce the PP and this is a gorgeous PP I think early 1980s man here in France produced West German stamped I should cue that sound again of the tomb opening in Raiders of the Lost Ark this is the original box the original papers that came with it this thing is massively collectible and massively cool I like the PP as much as I like the PPK, in some ways kind of more. There you go, I said it. There's the manual. Look at that. Oh, and it's a blued one. Gorgeous PP in excellent condition. Now, as it always does, the plot is going plot is going to thicken a little bit and some downsides here. We'll get to those as we move along. But we're talking about second kind of cool. We're talking about the movie career of the PP and the PPK. That's right, I said the PP. That's been lots of movies. Actually, did you guys catch it in the 2011 kind of spy thriller, Hannah? 
That's right, Kate Blanchett's character, I think her name was Marissa Wiegler, was running a PP, if I'm not mistaken, stainless steel polished one, and she was taking out lots of people with it. At incredible ranges, I might add. Here we go again with the supernatural capabilities of this little PP, PPK series. Second kind of cool, you bet. We've grown up watching it. Even to this day, it is a sexy pistol in the movies. I'm all for it, really. I actually like more realism in movies, but if we're watching James Bond for realism, uh, come on. That's kind of dumb, right? We can go elsewhere. Let's talk about first kind of cool, and that's where the rubber hits the road, and that is why, really, I continue to love these 380 pistols. This gun, both of these guns, served for decades and are still serving with some serious people that have a serious need for a defensive pistol. We're talking VIP protection. In World War II, it was a favorite uh, of the German forces for basically an officer's pistol, but also self-defense, close quarters. So it has military, a huge military record of that sort. Also, law enforcement carries and did carry the PPK for decades. Served well. And then how about probably the largest contingent, and that is concealed carry permit holders carrying the PP and the PPK with great success, I might add, meaning that it's comfortable to carry. So that means you're going to have it on your person. And two, when you need it, it's probably going to rock and roll. This is a good time to perhaps say there are so many varieties of the Walther PPK, the PP, I cannot cover them all. This one here is a Ranger Arms produced, I'm sorry, Ranger Manufacturing produced in Gaston, Alabama, PPK. It is roll marked with Inner Arms in Alexandria, Virginia. And I will say that this, the quality level on this PPK, if you can get one, the Ranger Manufactured one is superb. They had to quit making the PPK, or I'm sorry, importing the PPK after the 1968 Gun Control Act passed because it did not have enough importation points. Yeah, how stupid is that? So the PP was devised and actually for importation also the PPKS because it had a longer grip. It basically has a PP, PP frame with a PPK slide on it. That's a PPKS. Those are the two models I'm going to use, and so there, this is an inner arms one, and I believe if I'm getting my facts straight, like I said, man here in France, one right there. Jumping into it, philosophy of use. We're going to really get into the innovative design, probably under ergonomics, so I can stay organized. Because there were some things, the PPK, I should say the PP, because it came out first in 1929, the PPK there came out in 1931 and that stands for police pistol detective model literally police police pistol short or curse was a PPK kind of like a detective's pistol so we'll hit the innovative designs of this gun when we get to ergonomics so let's hit philosophy of use and I think first and foremost it is a presentation pistol I don't think it was originally originally used as a presentation pistol, and by that I mean something that's given to officers, it's kind of a status symbol, it's extremely collectible, it's special. We can look throughout history and see all types of amazing, highly engraved and special edition Walther PPKs going all the way back to, I don't know, the 1930s, definitely the 1940s, although I will say the wartime fit and finish of the PPKs coming out of Germany and elsewhere were pretty rough. They just didn't have the time. But in the 30s, styling. Presentation pistol. I think in a lot of ways it still functions as that. And we can go ahead and roll in collectible as well. There's people whose whole collection revolves around these two guns. And I salute them for it. It's compact. It's easy, easy to store. And it is steeped in history. Most of it wartime history, specifically World War II. It is a fascinating pistol, presentation pistol. If you want a special gift for someone, if you can afford it, I can't think of too many gun guys, or gals for that matter, that would not like 
a PP, just as a collectible, second kind of cool. There's your first philosophy of use, and I think even in 2012 and beyond, it's going to function that way. Absolutely, these guns are just special to me for all the reasons we've been talking about. But let's get real. We have lots of competitive options out there. Really great compact guns, stuff I've talked about before. They're super lightweight. They are chambered in a more meaningful caliber. Is it still a viable defensive option? Well, I'm going to send you to my video, Philosophy Type, the, where I talk about how the 380 sucks. It still does suck. Has limited stopping power. It's expensive to buy and to shoot. And some other reasons I talk about in that philosophy. I prefer to carry a very slim line polymer framed 9mm. But to answer the question, is it still viable? Absolutely. There's people every day that walk around with one of these two pistols strapped to themselves. Maybe it's a police officer, maybe it's a federal agent, maybe it's a concealed carry permit holder, civilian variety. It serves well. It has defended lives throughout decades, the Walther PP, PPK. It is a viable option. Not the most powerful, but like we're going to see in accuracy, they're extremely accurate. Perhaps the most accurate 380s I've ever fired. I'll, I'll show you what I mean when I show you the targets. There is some great competition out there, kind of like the SIG P238. Defensive pistol, you bet. How about recreationally? Well, like I said, this is a this is a circa mid 1990s. I think I got this one in 1994. This is my PPK. Got this in 1994. So this is the Inter Arms version of the PPK before Smith and Wesson got a hold of it and ran the Walther line. That's important to note because the Smith and Wesson PPKs have an extended beaver tail right here. Kind of jumping ahead to ergonomics a little bit. That will protect your hand from a phenomenon known as slide bite. As this slide comes back and our large size hands sit there in the web, you will get cut right here. And yes, I get this to this day on the Walther PPK. The Inter Arms versions and previous PPKs, I get it. The Smith & Wessons, again, have a larger beaver tail. You're not going to get that. Getting back to the recreational philosophy of use, I would say absolutely not. <laughs> not with this gun. It's not really fun to fire for a lot of people. Now, I'm weird. I love shooting the PPK. I could take, I don't know, and I have done it recently. Take out a PPK, the PP, and shoot hundreds of rounds through them. I just, I just have a great time. I can put a glove on, mechanics glove, good to go. I enjoy it. Some people don't like the recoil; they find it snappy. I don't think it's that bad at all. Actually, it's a 21 ounce gun, totally doable. That's philosophy of use. I'll leave it at that. Firepower is limited. We're gonna say six rounds for the PPK. Seven for the PP, I'm sorry, the PP, and also the PPKS. I'm going to throw it in right here. Guys have asked me occasionally throughout the years here in TMP, hey, which would you buy, the PPK or the PPKS, if we're just talking about these, this gun. You're looking at it. The regular PPK is my favorite, hands down. I, I'm not a fan of the PPKS. I want maximum compactness. I like the lines better. It it's just does it for me. I can always take along an extra magazine, right? A PP magazine that will run an extra round. But firepower is limited. You know, if you compare it against current offerings in the 380 realm, it's on par. PPK. There's a Caltech P3AT, the Ruger LCP, again, the SIG P238, the Walther 380, the polymer framed one. It's about on par. Make them count, six plus one, for all intents and purposes. By the way, you're gonna be hard pressed to get a PP these days, a genuine PP. They're not around. They don't even sell them through Smith & Wesson anymore. So they are collectible and they're special. There are some other ones offered throughout the years, kind of like the Daewoo DH380. That was a really cool, very affordable, parkerized version of a Walther PP. They came out with it in 22 and 380, eat your heart out. Speaking of, uh, by the way, chamberings, these two guns have been offered in those two calibers, 22 
the ones on the table are in 380 chambering and then very popular especially in World War II was a 32 ACP that's still being offered by Smith & Wesson by the way if you want that and here we go to accuracy one of the reasons I love this gun so much is because it is so accurate now every gun can be its own animal it has its own personality so you may have someone that's a PPK or a PP for that matter from whatever era you want to say and they're having troubles with it getting it to print all I can tell you dudes are my data points and they're gonna go way back way back I'm gonna take you back to 1995 with this first target with that stainless steel inner arms PPK wait, you've been wait, looking wait. at all along <laughs> December 26 1995 that's six rounds at seven yards didn't say the rounds that I shot there. That's going to be a fun review. Here comes another one. Oh, this is at the Spokane Rifle Club, I believe, when I used to live up there. This is USA Full Metal Jacket, seven yards, rested, six rounds. That is phenomenal. Amazing out of a 380. I have some Smith and Wesson 422. There's some Glock going on there. PPK. Seven yards, it opened up a little bit. I said rest. I probably probably wasn't happy with that. I'm not sure what gun that was. Didn't label it. Here we go with some 90 grain hydro shocks out of this pistol right here again. This is probably same time frame, probably around 1995. Nice groups. That's a one inch group there. And if I marked it, that means it wasn't part of the group. This is the actual group. I shot. 90 grain hydro shocks shoot amazingly out of both of these guns. That has been an extremely accurate round for me. Check this out. Do this with your 380. This is 25 yards, six rounds. November 19th, 1994, Spokane Rifle Club, one and one quarter inch group. Let you absorb that just for a second out of a pocket pistol, this one right here. I gotta tell you, gotta be honest with you, I hand selected this one. They had, when I bought it at the White Elephant there in Spokane, Washington, they had like three of them. I said, can I look at all of those boxes? Because, and I wish I had it, they come with a test target. At least they did back then. So I chose the one with the best test target. And it continues to be an amazing shooter. Again, every gun is different. You're going to see some targets from this. This also is no slouch. Here comes another one. I think... Is this me? I have Mrs. Nothing Fancy shooting some here. This is the first time I ever shot it. 90 grain USA loads. This is around 7 yards in the woods. Excellent. Well, not really. That sucked. Thanksgiving Day. You guys digging this? 24 November, 95. Oh, you know what? That last group was Mrs. Nothing Fancy. There you go. All right. She did all right with that. This is me again. Seven yards. Not bad. First time I ever fired it. Walther PP, come on down. I got some targets to show you for that one, too. This is October 2011. That's this one right here. 16 yards. I did fire some plus piece through it. Fancy. Eh, a couple rounds ain't gonna hurt. Look at the grouping out of that. Except I was aiming here. Yeah, that PP shoots high. It just does. Point of aim, point of impact. These are all Mac Techs, I guess. Point of aim, point of impact. The groups I'm pretty happy with, though. I shot these guns a lot. I was gonna do the review in like 09, I don't know. Got busy. Here's a target for me. This is the Walther PP, German one, the one you've been looking at. Five yards standing. Brass and aluminum FMJ, November 11. Shredding the head with that one. Again, I'm compensating on the aim to connect. I am aiming low on those, if I remember right. Here's nine yards standing, Walther PP. I probably ought to go faster because I got a lot of targets. TMP spent a lot of ammo money doing this review. I cannot lie. Lots and lots. There's another reason for that I'll tell you here in a little bit. Here comes, I think this tactical doodle shooting it. This is 
November last year. Group two, group one headshots. These are Aguila jacketed hollow points. I'll roll the footage in somewhere. Good groups. Good groups. Hard to do with those little tiny polymer 380s. So there is an upside to the size and weight, which we'll talk about here. I think I forgot that. Another group there. Another group here. Couple more to go. Fast forwarding. These are all Walther PP, but honestly, these two guns shoot almost identical as far as you know accuracy goes. Walther PP, 90 grain, full metal jacket. Oh yeah. I think this is out in the desert. Tap the doodle and myself shooting it. Nice groups, nice groups. I'll end with this one. That one opened up a little bit. Not too impressive. That one is outstanding. This might have been at impact guns at their range. Yeah, Walther PP, Walther PPK have amazing accuracy. And I did kind of fly by it, size and weight. This is a good reason to talk, a good place to put it in. One reason they're accurate is because they are a little bit bigger. They are a little bit heavier. That makes them easier to shoot over, I don't know, no, 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 this. Next time you're at the range, you see a dude or dudette shooting with a LCP P3AT. Shoot, have them shoot at seven yards, not three, not five, but seven yards. See how close they can keep them. Maybe it's you. You might be surprised. It's harder than you think, especially with the sights, which generally suck. Thumbs up for accuracy. Absolutely love it. And then on to ergonomics we go. And I said I was going to talk about the design of this gun and how breaking it was, groundbreaking it was. And it was. The, sing the double action to single action transition was invented with this gun by this man right here, Mr. Carl Walther. You guys are familiar with that, right? Because everyone's copied them since. Well, not everyone, but lots of designs to include the successor to the Luger, and that was the P38, which came online in 1938. It copied this design. We pull the trigger, and this one's safety checked, of course. We pull the trigger in double action, and then it will cock to single action. That was a Walther PP innovation. Unheard of. So was this. A decocking safety and a firing pin indicator. I'm sorry, not a firing pin indicator, but a loaded chamber indicator right there. I don't have rounds in there, obviously, but that was innovative back then. But here's what strikes me most about the design of these little Walthers their size 21 ounces, a little bit more for the Walther PP, but look how thin they are. Coming out in 1929, this gun was groundbreaking in its flatness and pretty much its reliability in either the 32 ACP, 7.65mm, or the 380. Groundbreaking. The ergonomics were amazing and in some ways, in some ways still amazing to this day. The trigger is stiff to pull. I'm not going to lie to you. The lock work is complicated in a Walther PP and a PPK. It takes a hard hammer hit and because of the geometry of the parts inside, you're going to need a stiff trigger pull on that first shot. However, the second shot will be single action and it's actually a much nicer trigger pull. Especially if you work it, get it to a gunsmith that knows what he's doing. I had a little bit of work done on this. I think by Terry G did it for me. So it pulls, I think, single action around four pounds or so. This one I didn't measure. Ergonomically speaking, the trigger is doable. And you've seen the whole video. I've had them riding just like this with the safety off. Now, these models do not have firing pin blocks. The Smith & Wesson versions do. So they're a little bit updated. I'll tell you what, though. When I carried the Walther PPK, I had a round loaded in the chamber and I carried it just like this in a horizontal shoulder hol holster and it worked out just great never had any issues with it and part of that is because of that very stiff trigger pull it's not going to go off on its own it just isn't maybe a danger of the PP design is if you do carry safety on and you're used 
used to a gun like this that doesn't have a safety, you just may forget to take it off when you need to shoot. I've talked about that lots in reviews over the years. So be careful. Very careful. Ergonomically speaking. And we're talking about accuracy. The sights are excellent on the Walther PP and the PPK. I've heard complaints over the years. I've heard it. Been around. Talked to guys. Oh, I hate the sights on the PPK. I'm like, I like them. They're precise. For instance, in my review of the kel P3AT and subsequent ones, I talked about the sights and how bad they sucked and how they could have easily put on slightly higher profile sights like this to improve the gun. But nothing fancy. Those are belly guns. They're not designed for accuracy. Oh, really? You do need to shoot accurately in a situation. What if you're a police officer and there's someone getting ready to get shot? We can come up with a million scenarios of where you just might need to shoot accurately with the only gun you have with you that day, and it might be a Walther PPK. Because of those sights and precision they afford, being able to achieve, where did that one target go? High levels of accuracy. The gun for me personally gives me confidence. Yes, it's still a 380. But rule one is to have a gun. Rule two is to hit what you're shooting at. If you don't hit what you're shooting at, who cares what caliber you have? Well, I carry a 45 ACP. Yeah, but last time I shot at the range with you, you couldn't hit anything under pressure. Who cares what you're shooting? That's why I love the PPK and the PP, because I can hit what I'm shooting at, even at 25 yards. And when that little 380 gets there, the 90 grain Hydroshock, it's going to do something. It's going to do something. Ergonomics. The feel on the guns is outstanding. One of the reasons I stuck with the PPK for so many years as my concealed carry choice. I don't even know if I've told you that yet. I did. This was my concealed carry gun for years. I would say seven years is their first choice. Usually in a shoulder holster, like I said. Just like... What do we got here? Oh yeah, how about a Car PM9? Riding in the Galco Classic Light, which is my currently my favorite. It's a very thin, lightweight shoulder holster. Goes under the shirt. Most people don't even know you have it. I also used the Uncle Mike's one. Galco makes a beautiful rig for the Walther PPK. As we talk about accessories, there's all kinds of holster options for the gun. It's been out since 1929. Hugely successful. But the feel at least when you're carrying it, is outstanding. It's not banging around like some thick guns some people choose to carry. It's not the lightest gun out there. I can't lie to you. There's lots of guns that blow it away in terms of weight. I've been showing you some of them. Heck, even the kel PF9 fully loaded weighs 18 ounces, and that's with a 9 plus 1. Actually, a 9 round magazine plus 1 in the chamber. So it's lighter weight than an empty PPK, and it's 9mm. Going back to my philosophy video, the 380 sucks. We just got to keep it real, okay? So it's rare these days. I opt as a primary carry option for the Walther PPK. Mostly I stay in love with it because second kind of cool. Ergonomics. How about this? The magazine release. Right here. Innovative back then. Actually, there's some versions that do have the European Heel Catch magazine. For the longest time, though, the PP series had their magazine released right here. That was innovative back then. So was this. The rib that was anti-glare serrated has those wavy machine lines on there. Actually has a siding rib on it. Rounded corners. There's no sharp corners. Almost melted in design was the Walther PP and the PPK. That's cool. Plastic grips. Hard wearing, that's had all kinds of materials over the years. There's wood, plastic, the brown, reddish colored plastic were favored in World War II. Excellent. I'm probably forgetting some stuff on ergonomics. I may come back. That'll take us to accessories and versatility. Talked about holsters. There's all kinds out there. Whatever you want to carry. Unfortunately, though, there's not all kinds of sighting options. Look how cool that muzzle looks looks from all the rounds fired. That is just sick. You're kind of stuck with the sights with a PPK, just like you are with most, I say most, 380 pistols. That's not dovetailed. It's machined into 
the top and there's not a lot you can do with it nor do you have a lot of night sight options but again with its competition that's pretty much the case as well some exceptions do come to mind one of them would be the SIG P238 that does have night sights and they're actually excellent night sights you have some grip options you can get trigger work and that's pretty much where it stops with the PPK as far as accessories other than holsters maybe magazines and by the way when you get your magazines probably the only one watching this video are going to be PPK and PP lovers already no one else is watching probably these are excellent Mechgar I've had great success with them so you don't have to buy Walther factory magazines you don't you're gonna get the best finishing of them I think this is the one that comes with the PP so it's the 1980 circa Volta 380 magazine I'll leave it at that field strip and maintenance we're talking about design we're talking about the cutting edge design of the Walther PP series part of that would be the field strip I'm not gonna do all of it just for time I need to wrap this thing up but it's basically gonna pull down on the trigger guard you're going to use your index finger and push it against the frame and rest it. You safety checked it, you've extracted the magazine, you're pointing in a safe direction. After that, you're going to extract the slide and you're going to crank it up and lift it off. Heck, I'll do it with this one. Here we go. Field stripped. A lot of guns since then have copied that designed. Designed. Design. Look at the machining on this 1980s one. Solid steel, machined out. Look at the bluing on it. It's, whoever had this before me didn't like totally take super great care of it. I mean, there is just a little bit of wear, which means the individual carried it. He carried it a little bit, but didn't shoot it a lot. But still, I would rank this as almost NRA excellent for what it is. And I've done my best to take care of it. I think I painted that white side on there though so I could have some contrast that's field strip then you're gonna clean your rails back here which I need to do on this gun lube it up just a little bit probably some synthetic grease or oil maybe Militech or some other type of grease just a little bit clean this area here swap it out done put it back together remember that recoil spring I'm gonna to refer to it here in just a second in fact I'll do it now how about reliability? I guess I should have done it this way, right? Well, I will say this. This was not 100% reliable, the Walther PP. In fact, I had issues throughout the testing course with this particular 1980s era PP. Remember that recoil spring I talked about? A lot of people who are in the know of the PP series say you should replace it every 2,000 rounds. So upon getting this gun, I ordered a new one and actually a little bit stronger than I think what comes with it normally. And that's a 15 pound in the Walther PP. Oh, the PPK normally wears a 20 pound recoil spring. So in it right now I think is a 17 pounder and yes, it still failed to go into battery. It wasn't stove piping, wasn't big time jamming that I can remember, maybe it was. I've been testing it so long I forget. It was actually failing to go into battery. I talked to some people who know about it and I never got a great answer. Well, we can we can polish the throat. We can polish this, we can polish that. I'm like, well. One guy I talked to who is an affiliate gunsmith with Walther was unimpressive to me. I just didn't trust him doing it. So don't know what I'll do with it. I may turn the gun, may keep it. I just love it. I love the PP. They're so extremely hard to come by. I would say it's probably 90% reliable. It was about that 10%. It would just fail to go in the battery. As you've seen from the video, I just knocked the slide and keep on trucking. This gun here, the Ranger Manufacturing produced Enter Arms Stainless Steel circa 1994 PPK. Pretty much 100% reliable with any round I throw in it. 90 grain jacket and hollow point, no problems. FMJs, no problems. I don't give them a steady diet of plus P's, just every once in a while. They are steel framed guns, they should be able to do it. This one has been Three amazingly times. reliable. This so again, we get back to the caveat that each PP 
handgun is going to be an in individual. I think the ones coming out of Smith & Wesson have somewhat of a checkered past. I haven't shot them lots, and for this review, I don't have one. I apologize. But I think when they first started producing them under license, they had some issues. They weren't reliable. They were choking. Smith & Wesson corrected the issue. I think if you buy a Walther PPK, Smith & Wesson produced Walther PPK, I think you're going to get a good gun. I think it's going to be reliable. And if it isn't, you know Smith & Wesson. They'll make it reliable for you. How about durability and reliability compared to other 380 pistols? I would say it's going to meet or beat most of them. If you don't believe me, look around at Walther PPKs that have thousands of rounds through them and they're still trucking. You'll see them out on the used market. I have for decades. Even Walther PPs. World War II era PPs that have that many rounds through them that are 100% reliable. That's not to say that you're ever going to fire a thousand rounds through your 380 pistol, PP, PPK. You ain't going to be able, be able to afford it. It's just an expensive ammunition. How about value? The guns are expensive. It's going to run, at least when I looked at my dealers, around 500. 500 bucks. Oh, nothing fancy. That's a lot of money. Uh, yeah, it is. It is a lot of money. Um, keep in mind, there's some other 380s that are a lot of money as well. The car, PM380, comes to mind. The SIG P238, again, expensive. And neither of those even come close to the panache that this, this gun has. First and second kind of cool. Value is going to be in the eye of the beholder. To some people, a Walther PP, even this one, go, ah! But to some people, the history, the pop culture tie-ins, and honestly, it's capabilities. If it's running right, <laughs> you get a good individual, an older one I'm talking, and the accuracy and the still superb ergonomics of the gun make it a great value at, yes, even $500. If you don't believe me, go to some of those dedicated websites to talk nothing, uh, nothing more than Walther's. A lot of PPK, PPE threads, and guys just love them. They are a cool gun. Very few of them have a track record like them, too. Used as a German officer's pistol. Again, VIP protection. Civilian concealed carry for years and years. To this day, the Walther PPK and the Walther PP soldier on. They're not the only games in town. I mean, heck, you could go with a Bursa Thunder. But again, these guns don't have the track record. I'm talking decades going back to World War II second kind of cool type stuff and honestly they don't have the ergonomics at least in carryability but wait I love shooting my burst of thunder it's awesome I know it's about the same thickness slightly longer than the PP but look at this the grip is huge compared to the PPK there's good and bad with that the good is it's easier to shoot once you extract it I'm talking the burst of thunder the bad is when you carry it, it's just bigger. I just might as well go with a 9mm if I'm carrying a gun this big. Big. How about the weight? That's an aluminum frame versus a stainless steel frame. Well, you'd be surprised to know they're about the same now that we're talking about it. About the same. 20 ounces, 21 ounces right here. Then you got other 380 options or 380 ish options, kind of like the Makarov, Hungarian, FEG, PA63. Let's see, Astra Constable, CZ50, the SIG P230 slash P232, all following the lines, like this gun is, of this gun right here, the Walther PPK. But this is the original, issued to German military police throughout Europe, Luftwaffe officers, Nazi party officials, Schusstaffel, the protection squadron, the SS, and all kinds of great people too. It has an amazing history. Love the Walther PPK. And it's slightly bigger brother, the Walther PP. That's a nothing fancy review. Out. They don't make them anymore? No, they don't. Not PPs. That one's made in Germany, too. Sweet. And it's pretty clean. It's a blued version, which I prefer. It's just kind of a second kind of cool thing. Right. I just love it. It's a longer barreled PPK. It came out before the PPK, actually.
Well, 380 has always been one of your favorite calibers. Love it. Well, the thing I like about it is that you can pretty much hit the bad guy anywhere and it'll stop him. Yep. Because it has so much power. <laughs> <laughs> it still sucks. The 380 still sucks. But I love mine. I love all place. my 380s. It has a place. Yeah. As long as you understand the limitations, accept them. And this is one of them, it's just the cost to shoot it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest limitations of 380. It's expensive. On it. Still on this. Nice shooting. Thanks, bro. Love this gun. Love it. How can you not like a German-made Walther PP? Awesome. I question your manhood. Heck, for that <laughs> case, your womanhood if you don't love this gun. <laughs> the beautiful blue finish, the fine workmanship, the longer barrel, decent sights, good single action trigger. Double action's tough. Just second kind of cool, first kind of cool. I love this gun.